last show. Give a nice big welcome back to Mr. Chris Hatch. <laughs> and we are very honoured and privileged this evening, ladies and gentlemen, to be refereeing all the matches for our tournament. The former British World and European Lightweight Champion, Mr. Steve Gray. <laughs> Six matches for you this evening. We'll be taking three matches in the first match half. Three.
I know why you don't like me. You see a good looking man, confident, dressed to the nines, money in the bank, talent. Woohoo! Dripping off my body. And you can't relate, can you? Of course you can't. Ironically, as much as it pains me to say it, I used to be just like you. When I grew up, there wasn't carpet on the floor. There wasn't food in the cupboard. I wasn't the biggest, I wasn't the strongest. I took a few beatings in my time. But that right there is the main difference. See, I took my beats. I kept moving forward. I didn't blame anybody else. I own my journey. I got bigger. I got stronger. I attained wealth all on my own because I know exactly who I am. I'm the king of the earth. Every knee will bend. Every head will bow. And every tongue confess. Take this is greatness. What we're going to do now, we're going to bring all four wrestlers into the ring and we will draw the semi-finals for our new European Championship. So can we have the four wrestlers into the ring please?
Thank you, Steve Barker, and welcome everybody to the spotlight here in Hoddesdon in Hertfordshire. Rumble Promotions present this very important four-man knockout event for the new European Rumble Championship and belt. You will have seen the belt on the shoulders of Steve Gray, our referee. It's a brand new belt. We've uh, never had it before. Four men competing. You would have seen them. Coming up later, Nino Bryan versus George Castano, England versus Spain. But we open up with this clash between England and Italy. Marco Marinelli versus Danny Black. One fall, one submission, all one knockout will decide the winner. The winner will go forward to meet the, uh, the victor in the next contest. Referee in charge then, Steve Gray from Peckham, former British. European and World Lightweight Champion, so he really is the man for the job. Danny Black, a favourite, of course, with uh, the Rumble fans quite a while. Marco Marinelli, you haven't seen too much of him before. He made his uh, debut in 2007, so he's been around a lot. Done a lot of training and wrestling with uh, WAW, with the, with the Knights up in Norwich. Cleverly there, Marco went straight down to canvas to stop Danny Black trying what could have turned into quite a painful bear hug. So we have a very full crowd here at the spotlight in Holliston, all cheering for Danny Black. And he's only been around since 2017, but has gained a long experience wrestling a lot of places. Very successfully at the uh, Clapham Grand recently as well in London. He absolutely brought the house down with that one. <coughs> and they call him the Kid Without Fear. Well, he will uh, need his tenacity in this match against Marco Marinelli. Marco the Magnificent, I call him. Side headlock, change to the other side. 
Yeah, down your back behind that bear hug. Not going to be too effective. Wrist lever. <coughs> Still got it. <coughs> nice little arm drag. He's still got the uh, shoulder though and the wrist. Well, he came into the room with all guns blazing, didn't he, Marco Marinelli? With the attitude, he's, uh, we didn't know what to expect. He's stuck to the wall so far, though. Another neat little arm drag there, and again. Nicely timed drop kick to the top of the torso. Two sends Marinelli out of the ring. Marco, the magnificent. Been wrestling in Italy for quite some time. He came over to Britain. We say wrestled quite a bit with WAW. Has a base while he's over here. It was all for Mabby. And he's due back to go back to Rome fairly soon. So we wait to see whether he will take the new European Mumble Championship with him. Oh my knockout event. Whoever wins this has got to go in in the finals. This is the first of the semi finals. He's allowing himself a little bit of breather, but uh, Steve Gray, the referee, is going to put a count on him soon. There's only so much uh, time wasting the referee will allow. And I reckon it's just about the end of it. He looks like he's getting back in anyway. Well, we've got a very near full house here at the spotlight in Hoddleston. This crowd. <laughs> Absolutely loving this one. Oh, he shouldn't have gone with that because that would have been a nasty little wrench on the back of the uh, neck. And that's going to cause Marco, but he didn't look that, didn't look that magnificent to hold, did it? But Danny was just about to throw him, and Marco decided not to go with that. But now he has. to get across the goes. A cover. Just the count of two. Got that neck right across the throat. Now referee's gonna be watching this one closely. He's happy with it. It's not across the throat, so that's okay. Still cheering for Danny. But he's on the ropes and the referee's obviously making him break that hole. Which in fairness he does. Well Danny Black is becoming very popular with the fans at Rumble Promotions. They always queue up to get his autograph afterwards. Always delighted to see him. And following everywhere. It's like the Pied Piper giving away tenders, it really is. <laughs> Still going for that neck line. Well, I don't know what he's complaining about to uh, Steve Gray. Whatever it is, Danny needs to make a bit of a comeback here. Got him here, we come for the suplex. Straight to the base of the spine. Not really in the middle of the ring, so he can't try the 619, and that's again against the ropes. The referee will call for a break. Yeah, South London are Danny Black in a little bit of trouble here now. We said earlier on that uh, Marco Marinelli hasn't really broken that many rules, but he certainly has now got the count of flying to let go, otherwise he'll find himself back in the dressing room. Crowd are loving the wrestling, well, this bit is the enjoyable side of it, of course. It's 
the working out in the gym, the training, the running, the weights. That's where all the hard work happens. The bit is the bit they enjoy. Count of four, oh, count of three, looking far off the three, all of it. Fine line between saving a little bit of energy, because of course whoever wins this has got to fight again in the second half of uh, tonight's show. But Danny needs to dig deep here, he needs to find that extra little bit of energy. Back elbow, that connected. Back drop straight onto the knee. That's legal, that's all right. Yeah, it's really nice to see uh, Steve Gray in charge of this one. You say British lightweight champion. Won that title from Jim Brakes. He became a worldweight champion for a while as well. And he took the title off of Danny Collins. Plenty of experience, so it's amazing to think here we are in 2023. Steve Gray, who roughly made his debut way back in 1970. Big fan favourite, top the bill of the Royal Albert Hall, wrestled at Wembley Arena. A real legend of wrestling. Meanwhile, that counts for nothing to poor old Marco Marinelli who is in a lot of trouble with that leg wrench. Goes for the ropes and gets it, so the break will be called. Uh, it's great to see a star of the world this fall era. For those with long memories, remember Saturday afternoon, four o'clock with Kent Walton at ringside. That was on the TV from 1965 to 1985. It was longer to go in 85, but World of Sport ended. It became a standalone program until 1988. So a 32-year run of that British professional wrestling on the telly. And as you can see here with Rumble Promotions, it's still going strong as Danny Black gives a mighty high kick to Marinelli's midriff. Down he goes with the suplex. What's he going to do now? He's going to cover. Is it going to work? It is. It's going to work nicely. Thank you very much. So through to the final of the four-man knockout event for the new European Rumble Championship and belt. The winner, Danny Black. Anybody realizes how long I've actually been doing it because a lot of people still think I'm new like I've been doing it for a couple of years or so now nah, I've been doing this since this high pretty much yeah I'm, I'm definitely a high flyer for sure I think my style is exciting to watch and I think fans are gonna enjoy themselves my brother Daniel Lawrence is a professional cricketer place for Essex and England. Everyone always asks me, why did you not play cricket with your brother? And I wanted to follow on my, on my path on becoming a professional wrestler. I was a very shy, nervous and awkward little kid. To make things even worse, I was bullied as well, which which made my like mental health and just like I was I was I was just scared pretty much. But then once I found wrestling, my confidence just went up instantly. Uh, it's where my it's where I found my happy place. It's uh, it's been two years since. 
I lost my mum. Last time she ever came to the wrestling show, I was somebody else. Um, I wish she was here. I wish she was here, seeing me, I guess, kick people in the face and whatnot. And also just flying around like, like the weirdo that I am. I wish she could see me be Tommy. And I miss her every day. That's why I do this. In every entrance that I do. Because I'm taking her with me in my journey.
certainly is. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, Nino Bryant from uh, Boreham Wood. We're in Hoddesdon, Boreham Wood's not too far away. Nino Bryant from England then takes on George Castano from Spain in the second of our semi-finals of the four-man knockout event for the brand new European Rumble Championship. For England versus Spain. Referee in charge of this one against Steve Gray from Peckham. As always, one fall, one submission or one knockout to decide the winner. It's the Bamber at ringside here at this uh, wonderful, packed, almost a capacity house here, the spotlight here in Hoddesdon. You know, Bryant, we know, of course, big favourite with the Rumble uh, fans. Older brother of Zander, who we've seen in action, and uh, soon the older, older brother of Leland, who's only uh, 15, but he's got his wrestling license, and so we will be seeing him in Rumble promotions over the next few years. Castano, though, well, he hasn't started yet. He's uh, doing it at his own pace. He's been around a long time. Have to go back to 1998. And George Castano first laced up some boots and got in the ring. So he's going to try it at his pace. And you could call it youth versus experience. But Castano's going to want to do it his way. He would anyway, especially against a much younger high flyer from Boreham Wood, Nino Bright, only 20 years of age. <clears throat> against George Castano, who won't uh, like me to tell you that George is 41. So, Brian is uh, half the age of his opponent. But then you've got the experience on your side from Castano, and he's going to just take this at his own pace. So we get underway, into the referee's hold. Take hold, and we're off. Castano still with the advantage of that wrist lever. Castano will have the power and the solid. Oh, and there's a bit of a hair fall. If we didn't quite spot that, we spotted that at ringside. It's suspicious. I say Castano will add the muscle, the bulk, and the, uh, the heavyweightness. There's a Nino, of course, for that, the, uh, the high flying gymnastic ability. But he won't get a chance if he stays down for three on that, my goodness. It wasn't even close, but it was an early chance. Castano <laughs> still goes back to his part of uh, Europe quite often to wrestle, to Spain, to Colombia, occasionally to Mexico. But it has been seen. Uh, and then, as we say, over here since uh, 1998. the age of only 13, he was the uh, champion at Olympic-style wrestling. In 1995, the British amateur champion. So he was a lot of good quality pedigree behind George Castano. And uh, Nino Bryant really is going to have his hands full here tonight. Amateur grounding in Olympic style wrestling has uh, George Costano. <laughs> and he won't be impressed with any of the high flying antics of Nino if he gets a chance to show it. He hasn't been able to do it yet. This is Costano's way. He's just going to try and silence him, block him, flatten him any way possible. Tries not to cover him, he's going to do another one. <coughs> Will he pick him up for a third time? He is. He's going to do a third time. Oh, but he knows why to it this time. He does that. Very nice. Karate kick to the back of the head. That will fill uh, Nino with a bit of confidence. Of course, Nino is the Rumble promotions current. Mal Mason, lightweight champion. <laughs> so 
solid enough to block the Spaniard. <coughs> Four. Forearm smashes. This is where Castano could come unstuck because Nino Bryan, once he gets going, he's like a spinning top. He's here, there, and he's everywhere. There's no stopping him. Bryant uh, trained by David Francisco and uh, Eddie Dennis. He had his first match with in 2018. It's just going to be too heavy to lift, isn't it? He's <coughs> over 200 pounds of Castano. It's not that easy for Bryant to lift. And he's done it. <laughs> didn't get a lot of height on it, but it didn't matter. He flattened the Spaniard quite nicely. <laughs> and Castano is stuck in the middle of the ring, and uh, Brian can do one of his moves that he's known for. The Nino special flip, frog splash. Started off being a frog splash, but again, the experience of Castano, all it needed was to bring the knees up. And Nino Bryant felt that straight across the middle. Castano doesn't really know where he is. Just a count of two and a kick out. Referee in charge, Steve Gray, just telling him it was only the two. And against the ropes. <coughs> well, there's no mucking about when you've got the British World and European lightweight champion, the former lightweight champion, as referee. Steve Gray will be watching this one very closely because he's a cunning spy one, is George Castano. Just a count of two. <laughs> I don't think Castano can believe he actually kicked out of that. Say Castano's first match was way back in 1998 against uh, the, the greatest high flyers that Britain has ever produced. He really is a, a legend. Jody Flash. If you get a chance to see any of Jody Flash's matches, they are unbelievable. <coughs> Great friends is uh, George Castano with Johnny Storm. Johnny Storm, George Castano, Jody Flash, all part of a little group. Bear hug. Up to the upper lever. And this is where Nino's martial arts training comes in handy. Yes, and he held on to him. That was neat. That was neat. That was very neat. Nino Bryant goes through to the final. George Castano goes home. So both the Spaniard and the Italian are out. It's an all England final. So we look forward to that one then, it's going to be Nino Bryan from England against Danny Black. That'll be later on tonight, go to that because that is going to be a technical masterpiece from both of these great stars. Meanwhile, George Costano will go back to the dressing room, his night is done, and his hopes for a European title, a brand new European title, has gone.
Thank you, Steve. Steve Barker, our MC here at the Spotlight in Hoddleston. Yeah, Steve Bamba, welcome you to this wonderful promotion. Welcome time for what is going to be a fantastic tag match. You have to feel sorry for referee Chris Hatch, the third man here. I think he's going to end up being the, uh, uh, the fifth man at some stage. But anyway, Chris Hatch in charge. You get some underway then. Tommy Lawrence and Zander Bryant against the formidable combination of Kieran Lacey and Mark True. Tell you a bit more about these uh, two young stars from Essex in a little while, but they read each other where they know each other, where they live together. When the pandemic hits and no one could go anywhere, they quickly move in together, so they at least could form their own bubble, they could train in the gym, in their garden, in their shed, etc. Keep practicing and keep uh, training. And that was the best move they could have ever possibly done when wrestling stopped and everyone stayed at home. Couldn't even go to the gym. True and Lacey were training regularly. And this is the result. Finely tuned tag team combination. And they're going to be hard to beat. <coughs> so we get underway then. One fall to decide this one, Xander Bryant in against Mark True. It's going to be fast paced this one. All four men are known as quick and high flying. Surely not already, no, that was a, oh goodness gracious, Xander Bryant. You can't need to get that that early. So Xander's 18, he's the, uh, the middle of the three uh, Bryant brothers. Born from Bourne Wood, so far away from where we are now in Hoddleston. Mark True is a supreme athlete. Playing not only in wrestling but in martial arts. When he first started a few years ago, he knew him as Kung Fu Mark True. I'll give you some idea of the caliber of this man. MMA as well, mixed martial arts. <laughs> so Tommy Lawrence and Xander Bryant, their job is just to Stop him, really. A little bit close to the rope. But we had enough already. He didn't like that. He didn't like being dumped ceremoniously out of the ring. And he's gone walkabout. But referee Chris Hatch is having none of it. He's put the count on. He's at five. Well, I hope Mark can hear the referee. So he's arguing with the crowd. He's found a horse to lap or two, huh? Right. Dutch oh. Hardy's going to come down for a slam. No, they're going to reverse it. Folding press. Oh. Neat arm drag. And another one. Third rock kick, catapult, oh, right over to the neutral corner. He's had enough, in comes Kieran Lacey from Canby Island, gets much of the same treatment. Kieran's been around on the circuit for the last four and a half years. If he gets a chance to show us, watch out for his speciality, it's called the Kieran Crash Down. But it's Kieran that's got crashed down now as Tommy Lars does the cover. And that's Steve Barker, your MC, said earlier on the last time that Zazanda Bryant and Tommy Lawrence were here, they wrestled each other. It ended in a one for each draw. Both shoulders were down on the count of three. Tommy Lawrence, a fairly new face to a Rumble fan, but he's been around a while. Tag champion with the other promoters, most recently with the, the Turkish delight Hakan. Got him in a very nice wrist lock. Zander comes in to separate it, and <coughs> here and Lacey doesn't look very happy. Toasting early for Christmas. Again, yeah. 
Williams, aren't there, Brian? Just like his older brother, trained by David Francisco and uh, Eddie Dennis. Another catapult to the corner. Falling up the soldier charge. Now what Zander going to do? Cruz had enough of this with his... <laughs> Yeah, you haven't tagged, Mark. Out you go. That was a tag. I think the referee's happy with that, so Lacey will get out. Just about out, anyway. So there he is on the floor, Tommy Lawrence. One we could describe as a bit of ballet with violence, really, isn't it? This. When you look at Mark Sue, he's an amazing athlete. He said, but back in 2018, he broke his collarbone. He thought that was it, his career was over. He was out for three months, he made a comeback, and that's why he's now called the unbreakable Mark True. He said, You can break bones. You can't break my spirit, that's certainly true. But it's Lacey in now against Lawrence. As we say Kieran Lacey's speciality is a Kieran crash down. But we get a chance to do it against these two high flyers. Just a counter two. crowd are really behind Tommy Lawrence in here. That was a legitimate tag, so Mark True from Romford comes in. That's been a that Lacey has to get out. <laughs> now, yeah, Chris Hatch making sure that Vardo doesn't, uh, doesn't come back into the ring. Just toying with him now, with Mark True. Lacey asked him for the tag. Oh. I think Tommy Lawrence could do with the assistance of Xander Bryant. He's only 18, but he needs to get in the ring. And Meanwhile, outside the ring, it's all going off with Zavo against Mark II. And while Lacey argues with the referee, oh, it's all going wrong now here at Hoddleston tonight. And Zavo is just pleading with the referee, please turn round. What's been going on behind you, referee? He seems to think it's going to be the end pretty soon. So in comes Romford's Mark II. The undeniable, unbreakable Mark II. Back elbow from Lawrence. Well, that wasn't the Kieran crash down we were hoping for either. There's the tag. In comes Zander Bryant. Let's see if he gets a chance to do his speciality, which is the, called the big flip. He flips onto the shoulders from the corner. Is he going to do it? There he goes. Let's turn around. Oh, that's a big enough flip for us now. Watch this. A low style drop kick. There's a big flip. He did tag, so in comes Tommy Lawrence. Tony landed on his back, but he went crashing down straight onto his face. He's got to follow through quickly while the true is out of it. Building up for the big one. Here he comes. One, two. Oh, that would have been a three if 
Kill Rage, you had no written to fear. Saving his man. Well, Lawrence is going to have a thing about that. Yes. Oh. Oh, that would have hurt right from the back of the neck. And there's just no stopping True and Lacey either. We don't see them together as a tag team all that often. But it's an absolute delight when they do. And Zander's so light, he's so easy to lift. And that will do it. That is it. It's a win for the Essex boys. For Mark True and Keir and Lacey. And the Rumble favourites go back to the dressing room as losers. Steve Barker.